So we're on our way to Valley Primary School to do a talk. We've got Sandy with me filming the, the whole trip and the talk. I'll be really just decide what I was going to talk about this morning uh, because I've just been really busy right up until this point to actually think about what I wanted to talk about at the school. So the idea was just that I was going to come in and give the children like some inspiration and ideas for their career and the theme of all the speakers that are coming in today and this week I think is about work and like what they can do with work um, and I'm going to give them a, an alternative look on what they can do with their life and their career because I would say I definitely live a very alternative lifestyle um, and I'm just going to show them some photos and examples of things that I do and then I'm just going to give a, an actual talk about uh, the genius and ego and explain what I mean by that and why they, in relation to obviously the theme of work, they should be following their their own unique path rather than being guided by family or what yeah what parents want them to do, what society wants them to do, and uh, help them tune into their own intuition and uh, follow their own path. So that's the the message I want to leave them with, as well as just giving them a, an idea of how what I do and if one or two children like the idea of that they could maybe do the same. Earlier today I posted about nerves and how I've reduced them massively when I'm going to do public speaking and I would definitely say from the when I made the video my nerves have amplified a wee bit but still at a like controllable level before it was like debilitating like I couldn't think about anything but what I was doing in the future like that's what anxiety is and when you've controlled your mind over your body you can actually do things easier and your more your performance is better because you're not overthinking everything so even now I'm walking into the school I'm obviously feeling a wee bit more nervous than I was earlier but I think it's a, a controllable nerve level that helps your performance. In 2011, I actually moved jobs because the construction industry went downhill and I, I lost that job and then I used that as an opportunity to start my own business. Um, I was still living at my parents' home so I didn't have any outgoings, any payments to make. So I was starting from zero pounds a month and decided to start a business. And now I've got a web design business. So the first website I built, I made 200 pounds for one of my dad's friends. And I realized I could make money from that. And that's what led me to starting a web design business because I built some websites for my dad I was self-taught, I went on YouTube and, and learned how to build websites from scratch. And now I have a, a, a podcast, so I interview other guests on the podcast and that gets uploaded. And we do it, stream it on live, that was just yesterday. We stream it live on Facebook, so people can come and watch us and ask live questions. And I'm, I've been talking with lots of really interesting people. This guy has 112,000 followers on Instagram. so. It's quite good for me having this podcast because I get to speak to really interesting people with a big following and then part of their following follow me after the podcast. So it's a good way to build your uh, YouTube subscribers and that promotes my business alongside that. I also have a house clearance business which we just launched this year. Um, we've been building that up over the last four years and I have that all sort of managed by a, a manager who takes our phone calls and I focus on the marketing and growing the business. So I spend a lot of time on my laptop. So I get, again, I get to meet a lot of interesting people. This is uh, my business mentor. Um, I've got multiple business mentors, of just people I, I learn from. And I, pay, I paid this guy money to, to learn from him because he was 10 years ahead of me in business. So that's really helped. 
and that was actually I just connect, reconnected with him. We went out for lunch when I was down in London. So the idea of having a business, you get to connect with lots of really interesting people, and, and that's always what I've wanted to do. Is actually going to Dragon's Den next week for a social enterprise. All right. Uh, next Tuesday. Right. We've got a lot of business going on. Cool, yeah, okay then. So hopefully I can give you some tips for business. I see this as an alternative, unique way of some tips that you can use for business as well as life. Uh, this is my desk at the moment. I just got delegated, uh, moved out because we just had a third child. And that extra room is now my four-year-old's. So uh, my office was uh, is now my four-year-old's uh, office. So this is the dining room I've been moved to. Uh, but I can work from anywhere. I work in um, Starbucks and Costa quite a lot in Kirkcaldy and I move about quite often because I've got my laptop where I can go anywhere with that. So that's the freedom that what I want to share with everyone that the alternative way of working for someone being stuck at one place is I get to move around and go to different places and have that freedom to um, spend my time how I want. So if I wanted to take tomorrow off, I could and no one would really be that upset. So that's the, the opportunity you have when you start your own business. It's got its pros and cons. The pros obviously is that freedom. The other side of that is you have to make sure that you've got money coming in every month. Whereas if you're employed, people pay you and you're secure. So it depends how much risk you want to take. And there's, there's the good and the bad of owning a business. There's some months we've not had any money and I've had to work really hard and bring money into the bank. So that, it takes, it does take five, 10 years to really build a substantial business that starts to pay you and you get to live better. But the upside is the long-term effect is you get the freedom and you can retire young. I'm looking to try and retire at um, 35, I'm 32 just now. Wow. And oh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't want to retire to do nothing though. I want to do a lot of things. So again, these conversations with people there's part of my life purpose, uh, which I'll be going on to, um, to share and do talks like this and, and share what I've learned from life. And uh, so I, my idea was to retire young so that I can then go and do things that I love to do. And one of the things I've learned I love to do is, is talk and uh, uh, do uh, talks and speeches and teach people. So I should have probably been a teacher, but this is the way that I, I took my career. I ended up starting a business, so I'm doing quite well with that. Plan to retire. This is a picture here of a castle. Is this, it's not this specific castle I want to buy, but one of my goals, my dreams was to buy a castle I decided when I was 12. And that's what I've been working hard towards as well, because um, I just thought it would be a nice story to, to try and earn enough money to buy a, castle, a Scottish castle. Cause I, I like them and that's uh, the idea I want to give everyone here is you have a dream and you go for it and that's uh, no exceptions don't compromise on your dreams go after what you want so th this is what I'm talking about when I it's the title of the talk was to uh, how to be a genius and what I mean by that is we have two sides of us in our, our mind or our head one is a g our g being a genius and the other is our unconscious ego which is, our, our ego is a side of us that is like the negative talk, the fear, and where we're scared of things, and we're hesitant, we don't act on what we want to do. And whereas the genius, when we're, when we're in our genius, we go and do the things regardless, we, we go through the fear. And this is what I want to, to share with you. So a good example is, this is a really bad blurry picture of, Moana, um, it's a film I've watched lots of times with my, my family. Um, my my four-year-old daughter loves that film, we've watched it a thousand times. And he talks about, I think, wayfinding, and he, he puts up his hands to the, the sky, and he talks about um, knowing where you're going in your mind. And this is a really, there's, there's lots of good lessons to learn from these Disney films. That, like, deep inside the Disney films, there is actually really good life lessons. Uh, what we'll do is take questions at the end, so if you want to write it down, <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> um, so when you're, you follow what's in your mind and, and let that guide you, that's what I mean when I talk about um, our genius, because our genius will lead us into 
taking action or for example a castle is a tangible goal that I want to achieve and as I'm trying to achieve that I'm, I'm taking advice from my, my inner wisdom which is what Mo, uh, Maui talks about on Moana when he's uh, talking about knowing where you're going in your mind because no one no one can give you what you want more than yourself like you know yourself more than anyone because you spend the most time with yourself your parents know a wee bit a, a lot about you but you they, you know yourself more than your parents so following what you want to do following your heart following your dreams is where you actually lead your life to where you should be not where your parents want you to be and um, even even teachers and and um, mentors like my mentor there's times where i had to not listen to him and follow my heart rather than what his it seemed like good advice and that's the hard part that's when i'm talking about genius and ego there's times where we follow the norm or we follow what makes sense to us inside like you you know people say your gut um or your instincts it's, it's about following that intuition and even fighting through some of your the battle in your head and, and winning and winning that battle and doing what you want to do. Uh, there's the film Harry Potter, he's got this scar and he was born with this purpose in life. And this is what I mean again when you're born, even your your ego and your so what I believe in is we live in a physical world and we have a soul and it's like the spiritual dimension of the world. So we have the soul of the spiritual dimension in the physical world and people talk about God and uh, universal intelligence and, and that some some people are religious and follow that so my my idea of it is that we have a, a unique purpose that we should follow from the beginning like Harry Potter did and that led him to have a quite a different life from the rest of his classmates and he when he followed that and that led him to uh, where he got to in the end so for we all have a unique purpose that we were born to do and that's where that where I'm trying to follow what it is that I want to do for the rest of my life and not and take advice from people but then put it through my own mental skills and, and decide make the decisions myself in the end and uh, this is a Harry Potter is a good example of doing that. He had to fight through a lot of resistance to to go and live that alternative life. So moving on to the other side. So that's what I've just spoken about is how to be a genius is follow that life purpose that you have from birth. Uh, we all have dreams. Follow that, and then on top of that, follow your intuition. When you have a a vision, an idea, a dream. It's about taking action on that. But the thing that will prevent us is this here, which is our unconscious mind. So imagine this is your brain. We've got the, the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. The conscious mind is where we, things that we know, we can see, we're aware of. And then there's other parts of our brain that's unconscious, it's unaware. And it's, it's built into us through our, our parents, our past, like, past trauma, traumas, things that have happened to us in the past, um, something like when you've hurt yourself or got hurt uh, and your feelings have got hurt. And, and what happens is the ego, the unconscious mind, tries to protect you from repeating that and being hurt again emotionally or physically. So the ego is just trying to protect us. So it's, it's like um, it saves us from walking into a lion's den. And that's it's an old part of the brain that's not as needed today. It still protects us from walking out onto the road and getting run over. So what we need to do is listen to our genius when a thing is not that dangerous. We have to decide on our own what risk we're willing to take. And uh, listen to this as well. Ask, ask yourself, does that make sense or do I still want to do this thing? And, and then go through the fear go through um, that protection mechanism that's put into this, installed into us. Because um, it, the, the negative side of that, because there's good sides of that, because it, it will protect us from getting hurt. But the negative side of that is it will stop us from actually 
in, enjoying our life, being happy, and living our the, the dream that we had. So it's about not compromise, not not uh, giving up on the dream. And this thing will make you give up on your dream if you listen to it too too often. And um, so the last part about all of this. So how we become aware of that unconscious part. So make the unconscious conscious. So move the unconscious stuff that we're operating through into the conscious mind. How we do that is through, this is a journal, so through reflection, just being alone and, and being in our own thoughts, talking to friends about things that are in their head. Uh, I have some coaches, uh, I, again, I'm a mentor, so someone who gives me advice. Someone, I have someone who gives me advice, someone who listens to me for about half an hour every couple of months. I just talk to them and talk away. It's like, essentially it's like a therapist and that they listen to me, give me feedback and most of the time I'm, I'm doing the talking and figuring out things for myself. And what that does is it brings the things up from the unconscious mind that we can't see that's making us take action and moving it into our, consci our conscious mind so we are now um, not repeating the same mistakes and being able to overcome the fear. So basically sitting with a bit of paper and writing things down, writing down your goals, your dreams, and writing down what you want out of your life, and then also writing down the things that, when you write them down, what comes up is the, the ego will come up and say, you can't do this because this, you can't do it because this. Write those things down as well, because when you write them down, it gets it out of your head out of the unconscious part of your back of your mind and puts it to the front of your mind and even onto paper so it becomes physical. So it comes out of your mind and becomes a physical thing and you can read that. And, th and when you read it, sometimes it's really strange. It's the, you're like, why is that in my head? Like it's such a, like, they're old beliefs that don't make sense anymore, that they stay in your head. So a, a way to get them to become aware of them, they don't go away because they're deep rooted in your, in your mind from zero, or actually happens when you're in the womb, <laughs> in your mum's womb, before you were born, uh, because people are talking as you're, as you're developing. So these, um, these beliefs go into you before you were even born, and as you grow up, parents, people give you these beliefs, and between zero, basically, to the age seven, your, your ego this, this area of your brain is created and it becomes a pattern that repeats itself throughout your life. So all, what this journal and what this reflection process does is help you be aware of both sides, like what do I want out of my life and what's stopping me in my own mind from getting that. And then being aware of that really helps. So that's me. Any questions? Yeah? <laughs> my favourite what? Superhero. Uh, mm, Spider Man. <laughs> yeah? What's your favorite movie like, that inspires you? Inspires you? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. Um, let's try to think. Um, that's a hard one. That's a really good question, David. Maybe. Yeah. It's yeah. not a good one. What one day, which is like a rom com, uh, I didn't expect to like it. My wife convinced me to watch it, and uh, it's a really good film. It uh, makes you grateful for what you have. Yep. Yeah. When I was younger. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the headmaster. No, it was never. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can think of is He-Man. <laughs> yep. What's your favourite colour? Blue. <laughs> yep. Uh, why did you start making football? The main reason was I had that instinct to want to talk. So I started going to public speaking classes. I always wanted to have I always wanted to have a radio station so that I could bring guests on and talk talk myself and I just have so much to share. So I was like, it the podcast is just one device, one way or platform 
of being able to do that sharing. Uh, again, going back to like my actual my purpose is to help and enlighten the world, whatever that means, is quite a big vision. And do that through my own experience and sharing that. So a podcast is just one way of doing it of many ways. So it didn't have to be a podcast specifically, but it made sense because I practiced my speaking, I got better at that. And it's a good way to interview other people. And so whenever I have questions for someone, like uh, this guy here, he's nothing to do with business, but he has a lot, he talks a lot about health. And I was wanting to learn more about health. He, I, I followed him on Instagram, I probably followed him for about two years, and I read every one of his posts. I always have like a, a question I want to ask him, and he was too big to answer the question. Like he had 70 other people asking questions that he didn't respond to, because he was too busy running his conferences and doing bigger things. So it kind of takes me out of being a small person, and makes me, I can bring value to him by putting I'm in front of my audience because I've got uh, about 3,000 people following me on Instagram, so that puts him in front of 3,000 more people. Um, so that one of the reasons I started a podcast was to, like to be able to connect with people who I could reach up to and learn from, um, who were bigger than who were doing more successful than me, or I could learn from. So that was kind of a big reason for starting a podcast. And it allowed me to create a platform where. I would be able to connect with people that I wouldn't otherwise be able to connect with because they were famous or too too famous. How do you reach out to them? Just like their Yeah, okay. yeah. So it is. It's some things that simple. Some things they pass me on to their assistant, okay. to their PA, and then I'll deal with their PA for a couple of months. They'll ask me a bunch of questions like, "How much viewers do you have?" Because um. they'll they'll reject you if you only have a hundred viewers a month or or lower. So you need to hit a qualification. So it's almost like a ladder. You go up this uh, up a ladder. You start with people who you don't start with people with uh, over a hundred thousand followers. You start asking the people that they have three thousand. So I'll maybe ask someone five thousand, and then once I've got in front of them, my audience grows. Then I'll ask someone with ten thousand. Then eventually I take a big jump and ask him, and he responds to it because he can see I've got three thousand. So he's so we were more impressed than if I only had 100, 100 followers. So it's all, you just do it in steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your future goal apart from retiring? Uh, yeah, so once, uh, once I've retired, um, I want to do more of this. So spend all my time doing things like this and this. And it's to help people do what I've done, help people retire at 35, get, make enough money to retire at 35, so help people do that. That's going to massively impact people's lives if you could retire at 35. And then um, do that, help people with their money, that's probably the first thing I want to do, because that's, that affects everything. If you don't have, if your money problems aren't sort, sorted out and you live in the UK, it's life can be quite difficult. So getting money right and then helping them with their health. I study a lot about health and I'm running a marathon next month, uh, Edinburgh Marathon. So help people with their health, their, their, their life, their happiness, the, the spiritual dimension of life that people don't understand. I didn't understand until I needed to understand because um, I essentially got social anxiety and I'd never experienced anything like that. And I had to deal with that and figure it out. Now I have, now I, I don't not have it, but I have it less. So helping people, I'm dyslexic as well, so I really struggled through school. So being able to help people in general, because I've been through so much struggle, so I'm kind of this person who can be a light for other people, and, and, and that's what I want to do, yeah. And that's why I want to retire quickly so I can do that. Yeah? What's your favorite Sonic character? Sonic character? Yeah. Sonic. <laughs> it's an easy one. <laughs> yeah? If you were to have a different job, what would it be? Um, a full time speaker. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, I would like to spend more time with my children as well while they're young. So, 
be more spend more time as a dad. And so between that and uh, my family, I would like to spend more time to that because I've dedicated a lot of time to business and making money. What were you like as a child or as a teenager in school? Totally different from what I'm like now. Because again, that's why I talked about the, the ego. Because the ego really controlled my, my life. So I was shy, uh, had lots of bad limiting beliefs. So I was just shy, nervous. and um, But also, I've always, you always stay the same really. You've always got that. I've always been fun and humorous. So at school, again, I found the actual school part, the learning part really hard because I felt that the structure didn't suit the way I worked that well. I did get like learning support and things at certain parts, but I think I just like was lower on confidence back then, a wee bit shyer. But overall, like outside the school, I, I thrived and uh, I, I loved just, we played manhunt. I grew up in Octotool, which is like a small village outside Kirkbody. Uh, so we played the park, played football all day, every day. We met. Uh, 12 o'clock on Saturdays with all, all our friends and we played football from 12 to like midnight <laughs> and, and until our mums were bringing us home so that's, that's I spent all my time playing football when I was such a child. Yeah? Um, what did you have for breakfast? <laughs> what did I have for breakfast? Uh, I had a breakfast, a, a fast. Again I learned stuff like that from him so you know how um, in Islam they fast yeah, so like it's, it's got a lot of health benefits as well. So I I fast all morning. I had a coffee though. I had a espresso. <laughs> so you fast how long? Um, usually till twelve. Okay. So I get I usually get hungry for so five minutes and then. Right. Yeah. Um, Barcelona. But I'm not a very good fan. Uh, I went to a couple of Ray Grover's matches, but they disappointed me. <laughs> but um, I support Ray Grover's and I support support Celtic or Rangers and Celtic. And some people hate me, some people love me. And uh, Barcelona's probably, I like watching Ronaldinho and Messi. Oh, Messi did. Yeah. Uh, someone had their hand up here. Oh no, I was going to ask the same question. Okay. Yep. When you were very young, what were you doing? Uh, I was to be a space spaceman, <laughs> an astronaut. What you have for dinner? For my dinner, um, I, I haven't thought that far ahead actually. Um, my wife usually makes my dinner, um, so we might be having spaghetti bolognese again. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> See, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Pluto, the furthest away one, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I would like, I would like to go to space in my lifetime. Because uh, uh, now Elon Musk and I think Jeff Bezos are, they're two of the richest men in the world. They're helping people take trips to space as long as you have the money for it. <laughs> yeah. Is, is this on a star or a planet? On a what? Is this on a star or a planet? Uh, planet. <laughs> Any other questions? What? Yeah? How long was your longest time to um, have to speak with someone? On one of these? Yeah. Um, some of them, one's been about two hours, which is quite a long time, but I, I forget the time sometimes. Um, usually these guys are limited for time and they tell me, and they send me a message and privately and say I need to go because I would just let it run on. But, um, as long as we've got viewers that keep going, as long as people are live, if people drop off on live viewership then I'll cut it off. Who, uh, who have you had that interviewed? Um, so I've had... Uh, He's probably got the most following of all the people I've interviewed, but I've interviewed a, a successful entrepreneur from Inverness. He lives in Dubai now. Um, all right. <laughs> Do you know Ken Mack? Uh, no. Yeah, so I've interviewed Ken Mack and I, I, I speak to him now as, like, as a friend. Um, but he's, um, 
he's bought 12 businesses or more and um, sold some of them, but he's financially free. So interviewing people who are financially free, people who are very healthy um, or, and just successful in life. Um, couple of, another guy built up a business in America. He was a, a COO, was a chief operating officer for a big company in, in America. And he helped build that up, the multi-million pound business and, and sell it. And um, I read his book called, uh, he's an author as well. So uh, authors, I interview quite a lot of authors that uh, I've read their books and then I reach out to them and see if they'll res respond to me. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to ask, what would your best piece of business advice be? Just thinking about yes. our books and weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the, the main thing is to make sure that you're working smarter rather than harder. So what I mean by that is you're not working uh, like a busy fool. You're, you're getting other people <laughs> you're getting other people to do things for you rather than uh, doing everything yourself because if you try and do everything yourself you won't get very far did you all hear that advice apart from <laughs> yeah. ignoring our new yeah. our new pet missus no um, so working smarter not harder yeah. getting other people to do things for you and working yeah. as a team and yeah. doing it together so that's a huge part of our it's a social enterprise okay um, and we're doing books and weeks it's called but everyone's has a part to play so i think yeah. that makes it easier for yeah. people so yeah. it makes a lot of sense. using your team yeah. and not being an individual i, I quite have quite a natural individual mentality so i'll try and do everything myself and um, if i don't become aware like i was talking about yeah so work work with your team and um, don't um, don't try and do everything yourself if you get other people to do things that you're not strong at, so focus on your strengths and let other people do your weaknesses. Yeah. How do you deal with hate? Deal with hate. Block people. I've I blocked some of my friends, even though they were still my friends. Uh, I just I couldn't be bothered with the the comments because I I decided to start really focusing on my business when I turned twenty five. I just decided on that date. This is I'm gonna go for it, and putting stuff online is definitely that you get what you, what you call hate, and um, yeah, it's basically just brush it off and don't don't uh, take it to heart. So you you have to work on yourself to do that. You have to not take people's what other people think of you too seriously, and you have to develop your own confidence. So your confidence is so high. That that comes in and it's like you just brush it off. It's not a, a big deal. It takes a while to get there. I would say it's not something you do straight away. But again, it's like that ladder. If you do put put out what you're comfortable putting out online, and get a bit of hate for that. But if you go from here to here and you put out something that's super personal or vulnerable, like you might take it to heart a lot more. So it's kind of like building up to putting content out that it's more honest and truthful and it's more yourself I think is it takes a while to be more vulnerable and and what you talk about and when you put your it's kind of like putting your heart on the line that's what I think that's when hate really affects people the most when you really be yourself and people don't like it but I honestly I don't find I don't find it hard anymore but I understand the question because uh, it was it held me back from putting stuff up. Again, it just goes back to what I said on this chart here. Um, if you have beliefs in your unconscious mind, and if someone triggers that, that's when you'll feel it comes to heart. So take these unconscious thoughts and put them into your into your conscious mind so you can work on them. Um, and if you don't if you don't do that, Hate will actually affect you. So the, the journal and side of it will help with that. Yep. What are your favorite part of your job? Uh, when I make a big sale, <laughs> that's always good. Um, 
and the, uh, being able to help people. So I, I, I mentor other business owners now. So helping them, I helped a woman, for example, she started her business and I showed her how to make money. She started from zero pound a month and I helped her build a business to five, five thousand pounds a month. Um, so doing that and knowing how much I've impacted her life, I enjoy that because she now has five thousand pounds. She consistently paid you. So yeah, she paid me when she had like had a job, um, and I taught her how to start a business to get it to five thousand pounds. Took us took us eight months to get her there, um, so she's now doesn't have to rely on an other income, but she's made a, enough income from the business. So I enjoy helping people in that way because that's what I said. That my purpose is to help people and make, help them live a better life. And being able to help you with their, their money it makes a big difference in their lives. It takes a lot of stress away from them. Yeah. Well, you're still yeah. Yeah. So I've got two full time, uh, no, one full time web developer and a project manager. So they build it for me. And I, I just tell them an idea of what I want the website to look like. So I'll make the, the customers call me and then answer the phone and then they tell me what they want. And then I'll tell my team what the customer wants and they'll build it and then they'll talk to the customer. So once I've made the sale, I don't really get too involved now because it's again back to that point about working smarter. If I was to continue building the websites myself, I wouldn't get any further, I wouldn't be able to build a second business if I was building the website still. So I'm still, the websites, that's the key to business is um, being able to get other people to do things so you can do more things. And when you get your time back, the key is to get your time back, not to do everything yourself, because when you do everything yourself, you're losing your time. So if you can get 40 hours a week, instead of working 40 hours a week, get those 40 hours back. And then you can go and start other businesses and keep doing that. And that's how you essentially get rich and make a lot of money. Uh, so I don't build the websites myself, but I have a small part, a play in it, that I found a good team who built better websites than I could build. Hire, hire smart people that are better than you. That's a good a good tip as well. <laughs> yep. What's your favourite super is super villain? Super villain. Um uh, I'll come back to you. I actually don't know my answer for that. <laughs> yep. Um, PE and history, they're the only ones that did well. The rest were like D's and F's. <laughs> um, it just shows you, even yeah. if you haven't done so well, there's still yeah, an yeah. opportunity to do well. That was a very important message I wanted to bring as well. <laughs> if you don't do well in school, um, obviously listen to school and behave and take in as much as you can because it's a good chance to learn. I wish I learned more in school when I was in school because I was quite not focused, distracted, and because uh, it was, there was there's certain classes I just didn't enjoy. But it's better to tr to try and learn and behave and make friends and, and have fun when you're at school than do some of the things that I did where I just got a wee bit distracted and didn't learn as much as I could have. So there's um, the classes I did well in was PE and history I remember and I did okay in maths um, and English but not uh, I didn't do very well in everything else <laughs> I did well in art and drama and I don't, I don't know why I didn't take them further in, in the first year um, I used to in primary school actually I meant to say that I, I used to get so distracted from the work that I used to draw pictures in my, my notebook and I ended up getting a, a reward for being the best drawer at the primary school in Oxford Tool. Obviously, I got in trouble for that, but um, I'm not recommending that. <laughs> um, but it, it shows you that we're all unique and we all have our own talents. So 
school is about finding, is about like getting like a buffet and finding the one food or the one class that you like and then going down that route. And that, I found computing was actually the right class and that's how I think I ended up stumbling into web design. Yeah? Okay, what colour should we be animal? Um, that's a good question. That's Octotool. There's a castle in Octotool. I used to actually get chased by the gardeners uh, for running into them when we played Manhunt. Um, does, it, does everyone know what Manhunt is? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, like, it's like playing tech, but we so used the whole of Octotool, all the fields. So we ran so far out of Octotool that we ended up at this castle. And uh, we got chased through that. My friend used to stay in Octotool. Okay. Sonia, then. Yeah, Sonia, yeah. Okay, Sonia, yeah. I used to go to her almost every weekend. Yeah. Uh, those were the best days in my life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's just a big playground. <laughs> so, uh, because of that experience, like when my dad, I used to watch um, business videos with my dad uh, well before I really even understood what business was or understand how to use the information. I watched like business videos with my dad, and one of the exercises in that in that course was to set some goals and one of the goals was to buy Octotool Castle. I drew a picture of it and I've had that vision and goal ever since. So that was uh, why it's Octotool Castle. What does your trip be in the world of the kids? I think it was like Dexter's lab. I've not watched that for years. <laughs> yeah? Have you ever been forced to put in your job? I quit in the business. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Yeah. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. There's been loads of times where I felt like giving up, and like I said, it takes the, the pros and the cons of business. Uh, having a job is you're secure, you always get your income, you get a pension, and, and people you're looked after. So I understand why some people don't start businesses and, and, and keep it keep a job and stay in employment. Uh, so I've had about maybe five times where I've thought about that. So I've had five things where I've thought about that, about quit, <laughs> and that's, that's it's important not to quit. Uh, I've had some all-nighters because uh, hackers hacked all my customers' websites around Christmas time, around Christmas holidays, and I had my kids at this time, but I had to spend one whole week through Christmas uh, basically fighting off the hackers to keep the websites live because they all got taken down offline. But I've learned a massive lesson from that as well, and I ended up making a lot of money off the back of that, so it was a good lesson for me. Yeah? Hmm? Take you with me. <laughs> yeah, you can you can watch all my content and that'll be um, the same idea. That's why I put it out. So people can follow what I do and learn from it. <laughs> you can go on YouTube and type in Ben Lane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't put it up there, so I'll put it here. So, yeah. And uh, Instagram, which I put most of the stuff on. Or Twitter, it's the same on Twitter. I've got that. Ben Lane, then uh, number two then, uh, because number one is taken. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Anyone that's not asked the question yet, if they want to ask the question before I go? Yeah? Um, what are you having for lunch? Lunch? Um, I'll probably have some soup. Yeah, and a salad. <laughs> yep. I've been trying to think about that. You know who's next to me now? Yeah. Dr. Evil. If you watch Austin Powers? Yeah. I think I'm Yeah? Out of 10, how do you rate your business? That's a good question. So, uh, how do you business? I would rate that uh, uh, 7. And the web design business, I would rate that probably an eight. And the reason they're not ten out of ten yet is because I know I've got a lot more improvements to make. 
and uh, I'm not completely free yet, so I'm not retired. When I'm retired, I'll be 10 to 10. Because I'll be making enough money and uh, I'll be free as well. Oh, I'm hearing the word retired, starting five, and I'm like, yeah. oh, that's it. <laughs> okay, sounds healthy. Yeah. Okay, so I set that goal when I was 25, well, so it was a 10 year goal. So, that's the quote I remember that says, people overestimate what they can achieve in a year and underestimate what they can achieve in 10 years. So I think like to set a goal that bold and ambitious, uh, it takes 10 years to achieve it. So I've worked really hard from the age of 25, even before that, but not really that hard. I was still, uh, yeah, still not fully focused on, the, on what I'm doing now. Even, I would say, as every year went on, I've got even more focused and worked even harder. Uh, because I've realised that I'm getting to that deadline date <laughs> I set for myself. Yeah? Have you ever had to do a call with someone you hate? With someone I hate? Yeah. No, but I've seen people doing that. They, they call their haters and then they like have a conversation with them. Is that what you're meaning or are you just... Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I try and address every problem. Like if someone has a problem with me, I try and just speak to them directly about it. Like in on the online or in person, like my neighbour doesn't want the planning that I'm trying to put uh, gates and railings around my, my house. The best way for me is just not to do it through legal documents, emailing each other. I'll just go and knock on the door and speak to her and have have a cup of tea with her <laughs> and and resolve it. Rather, you know what I mean. Like, rather than getting like, like the way that people get divorced, like they stop talking to each other. It's it's better to, to talk and not get uh, legal stuff involved too much and just to resolve things rather than, um, yeah. So I think it's good to speak to your haters because then you can resolve things uh, amicably. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so okay. much. Thank you everyone. What do you think? I am really happy to have the opportunity to speak at Valley Primary School and the the opportunity it gives the children like we, we were talking about Sandy that they would they might not know about that other alternative lifestyle that they can live. So like the theme was around work and what careers they could take. So they've had multiple speakers come in and I was one of them and I have a, a very different life from a lot of people and being able to show them my experience in my childhood as well as like what I'm doing today to show them even if you fail in school you can still do well so giving them that opportunity to see uh, that they can still live a good life outside the school if they don't do well and on top of that just knowing that they don't have to get a job, that they can actually start a business, even from day one, and and do what I've done. Uh, so it's been it's really good that the schools are doing that and bringing people in, and I'm I'm really grateful and glad that I've come in to speak to them as well because I basically wish that I had someone come into my school and speak to me. So I think that's what I'm doing here is like going to the schools makes sense to me because is aligned with my purpose to be that person, mentor, uncle that I didn't have that I can um, be for those children that might not have that guidance in life. So just being able to impact one or two of them each time I go in, is like, that's really important to me. So I'm, I'm just glad that this, this is happening and I got invited back. <laughs> I'm always surprised by how engaged the primary sevens are. I kind of obviously mistakenly expect and assume that they're going to be a wee bit immature, um, which is just a wrong assumption. And then when I get there, they're actually really mature and engaged and interested. Uh, I don't remember m myself being like that at school at that age. 
is probably that assumption comes from me being immature back then and they just seem so grown up for primary sevens like that the, you forget you're at a primary school and uh, how many questions do they get sandy <laughs> Tons. like 30 40 questions easily and that was more than the last time and the teacher did say that like it's a really well behaved class i got some random questions that threw me off like what's your favorite uh, super villain and i couldn't answer that uh, i eventually said dr evil and because he asked me again <laughs> um but yeah i think what i re recognized is they're not as interested in the content that i had prepared which I, I prepared because that was what I wanted them to take away. I think a, a lot of them did take a lot away from that, but I've, I've learned that they actually were interested in me as a person in my lifestyle. I found that they engaged much more with that, just me being there and telling them that I have a, a, a business that I run and that I do the YouTube. They, they always seem to be interested in um, sort of the technology and video and where we're sort of technology's heading which is massively around video and they they were interested in like they when you talk to them in the language that they understand like view counts and um youtubing and video uploading videos and talking in, in, interviewing people and follower counts they, they seem to really engage with that side of things so that's it's like you can always predict from talking to uh, to P sevens what the future is going to look like, and massively like video is going to be huge, huger than it is today, and and it's crazy to think that because video has already been pushed for the last like we've been hearing about that since Facebook was taken on YouTube and things like that, but it's just it just looks like it's going to get bigger, so definitely the lesson is to like be involved in video somehow. And media, and um, that lesson of be, just be a, a media company. Think of your company as a media company, um, because that's that's where the eyeballs are, like video content. So, yeah, that just always the, the last three schools I went to before that the same same thing. I got the same message that they're they're so interested in anything around video and content and um i think a part of it is like getting famous as well and i think that's maybe a, a society thing that it's making children think that that's what they need to do to be successful so there's a bit of that i think is influenced that that's what they need to do um but i do think uh, the teachers even got involved this time as well. They got much. There was quite a few questions from the teachers. They, the teachers are uh, really interested in this idea of uh, trying to retire by age thirty-five, and I think it's almost like they were surprised and they were taken back by that because they maybe never really thought of that themselves. So it's not forgetting that there's adults in the building as well when you're talking to children and vice versa. That you're influencing anyone when you're when you're coming in as a speaker and teaching something that's valuable because i don't treat children like they're children i treat them like they're going to be adults one day and they're they're smart individuals themselves so i'm i'm not trying to come from like a condescending angle and because of that i think that's how i connected with the teachers as well and the teachers got quite involved and asked me three four questions and they seemed very engaged and like they learned a lot as well. So yeah, it's a good lesson as a speaker for me and what who my audience is, that I'm not subject to any age. That like if the way that I speak, I speak in quite a simple way that people understand, uh, a way that a un it's universal. So that I'm not, I'm not changing the tone too much when I'm speaking to children. I know I need to go to their uh, experience level when I'm, so I do adapt to that a wee bit, but I treat them uh, with respect as well. And I think that's 
what I found really fascinating about the, the teachers being involved as much as the uh, the, stu the, the class. Um, how, yeah. do you, how do you feel, I'm just going to change composition, it's always good for edits, but you can still talk to me. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit brighter in here, so... How do you personally feel that your experience last time and how it felt in the process of public speaking has changed? All right. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I always feel nervous before I speak, and, and this time and last time, it, well, all in a good way, that it wasn't overwhelming, and that's just the truth. I like to be honest with that and let people know I'm, there's not a time I go to public, do a public talk in front of more than 10 people that I don't feel nervous. It's just who I am. And I think every public speaker feels that. The difference from the last time and this time is I have noticed my confidence is like really in, like got much higher. I didn't, f I, f I think maybe I was a bit complacent, which was mixed with confidence that I didn't prepare as much this time. And it's just that skill I've developed of being able to throw a pretty good presentation and slide slideshow and talk together like that when I need to like I've got a talk today and I went and sat down and I didn't didn't do it yesterday I didn't plan it last week I had a talk today and I, just that ability to it's an ability I've developed as a skill it's not a natural thing so having like just the, the importance of practice um, doing the laps, constantly learning something until you completely master it. So if it's something you really want, you get to a point where you're, you've got to like a level of mastery where you can put a presentation together and have that level of engagement. Um, I would say I've, no, I've never stopped speaking since the last, before the pandemic when I did the talks before. Although I've not been as much, uh, I was telling you, Sandy, that I've not been in as much sort of public, physical with bodies, uh, public speaking environments. I've done more of it sort of online and been in the comfort of my own office with my, a screen talking to people through that. So not seeing the people was a really enjoyable part of that that I've missed. And the engagement's much higher with that as well because with that practice of speaking to humans and being being able to see them and see their reactions as you as you talk you can kind of adapt and change your tone change um the way that you're going with the talk and and you can also stop talking about going down a direction stop talking about that if you feel the engagement's not there whereas when you're behind a camera and you can't see the people sitting watching their screens you can go down the wrong path and and you lose them and that's is really key to never let go of public speaking completely in person. So in, just the importance of in-person communication because you miss the facial expressions, the body language, which I've studied a lot about and, and practiced a lot in my, my training of communication. So that was really valuable. So I think the, 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 the biggest change is I found this classroom was it's almost like evolved um, from two years ago for the, like the same age, same same primary seven. Um, there was just like even better behavior, and like it might be coincidence, but it's almost like I actually think uh, the people have evolved <laughs> over the last two years. I've definitely noticed that, and. I wouldn't say it's a coincidence like that this classroom just happened to be better behaved um maybe everything that we went through and the children maybe appreciate being in, in school now after being out of school at times um and yeah i guess like back to the confidence thing that's the biggest thing i would say has changed is the confident my confidence is I, I surprised myself like when i walked in and i seen how big the class was my nerves never got any worse. I just, I've practiced it so much that I stayed calm and 
it took me a while to get the laptop set up and but I just felt like I knew what I was doing and that really helps to just have that experience of knowing what you're doing and just getting to the point where you're standing on stage you've got your technology stuff sorted out hopefully tell the videographer that you're starting in the next thing because I didn't tell Sandy I was starting so he wasn't ready at the beginning um, so I'm still making mistakes but I'm, I'm making much less mistakes um, prepared mentally um, I did write notes and gave myself a structure in my head but I got rid of the notes so it's just things like that. I've not had to use notes I've put these slides on literally five minutes before being at the school before getting in my car and going to the school so just being able to um, to do that and I think although I've not done it in person I have been doing it through the talks I've been doing online so that's been a big uh, a big difference in me is just practice makes perfect perfect and uh, the truth behind that it's uh, if you don't use it you lose it like you need to keep keep practicing getting better refining it rather than settle where you're where you're at um, I think that's the, the key key thing for me